And welcome to episode 64 of the Techno Buffalo Show. I'm one of your two hosts for today, Sean Ani, Editor-in-Chief of the site. And I'm joined by Deputy Managing Editor, Todd Hazelton. Hey, everybody. How are you doing today, Todd? I'm good. Uh, apologies to everyone. We tried doing episode 64 once before, and things went horribly wrong. Uh, that was two weeks ago, and then I was in Irvine last week. So now we're back with the real 64. We're back. Yeah. We're back. <laughs> but lots happened since we were last here, and mm -hmm. specifically, I would like to discuss Microsoft, who, for once, I sat there during a presentation going, wait, what's going on here? I'm, I, I'm actually interested in what they're talking about. <laughs> I know. That was a really interesting press conference. Um, I was there with Jacob in New York City. Jacob's one of our writers on the site. <laughs> we were... Uh, you know, we went to the event expecting Surface Pro 4, and that was unveiled, and I'm excited for it because it has a new keyboard. <laughs> and you know me, I've used the Surface Pro 3, and I want to throw that thing out the window because I can't stand the keyboard. It's uh, not I that haven't... you have a problem with the tablet itself. Right. It's just the keyboard. <laughs> yeah, the keyboard has been killing it's you. It's like, I can't use this thing. So anyway, um, I haven't used it that much yet, but I was able to poke around on it at the event. I liked it. I thought it was good. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. So we thought we were just going to see that and the Lumia 950, 950 XL, which were introduced. Um, but then Microsoft surprised us with this Surface Book. It's first laptop and it's built from the ground up. It said it wants us to be like, you know, the laptop of all laptops. It's going specifically after Apple. Metal body, screen pops off. It's really cool. You hold like a, a, one of the buttons on the keyboard. It's an electronic and it just sort of unlocks itself. Um, really nice, really premium, and of course comes with the premium price of fifteen hundred bucks. But that was the big surprise. We were like, "Whoa, what is this thing? I didn't see this coming." So now I had one big question, just uh, since I was only watching on the live feed. Mm -hmm. So when they showed it closed, it looked like at the hinge there was a gap. Yeah, there is. That is concerns me. That that's I know. The only... I was wondering. Yeah, because I mean, imagine that's in your bag and like you've got loose pins or something. Yeah. And a pen could slip in there and potentially scratch the screen or do some other damage. I that overall, I was very, very impressed with it, but that gap does concern me. I'm wondering about that too. I wish I'd asked about that and I didn't, but it it does look weird. And I think one of the things we're all used to with laptops, you know, is you get especially when they're getting smaller and more powerful, it's like the super compact package, and you're like, wow, that's awesome looking because it just kind of comes into this slab. And then this is sort of like a slab that's sort of slightly open. So I don't know. There's something about like an OCD thing in me that's like, oh, close all the way, you know? Yeah. But otherwise, um, it, it's a nice computer, especially for people who, I mean, there are great Windows 10 laptops out there, obviously already, but a lot of them were sort of the Windows 8.1 upgraded to Windows 10. And now we're getting, even just since Microsoft's event, uh, Lenovo, Acer, Asus, Dell, HP have all announced their new laptops, and I haven't seen them yet, but I'm sure there's going to be some, you know, right up that alley of the of the Surface Book. But Microsoft's goal, and it sounded like I think they Asus was a little upset with them, um, or maybe it was Acer, but I think it was Asus that you know Microsoft sort of went on its own, didn't even tell its partners, its hardware partners, that it's building this like laptop tablet hybrid, which Asus has been known for, you know, and yeah. I know, but you can see where manufacturers would be a little upset. And I think it's the same thing that happened with Microsoft and Windows Phone when they bought Nokia and sort of, and even before they bought Nokia and they sort of just gave, you know, they seem to have supported Nokia far beyond all their other OEMs. And now it's what's happened. Most people aren't making Windows uh, yeah. devices. So. Now, I will say the, the Continuum feature on the Windows Phone was fascinating to watch I'll, I'll be interested to see how it does in a real world environment of course right but you know the idea of just connecting it to that little hub and then having a full-size keyboard and full-size mouse and full-size monitor all running from your phone is truly fascinating yeah that was awesome um the only thing that that bothers me about the phones and, and everything going forward right now is that microsoft hasn't provided release date information hasn't said you know where we're going to be able to buy these things it's just like it's very weird and we know windows 10 for phones isn't really quite finished because it's still beta on i don't know, I think i have a, a phone around here running it but it's still in beta so it's, it's just kind of weird it, it, it didn't feel like they were ready to go with that and obviously the app situation is the biggest problem facing them and will continue to be whether there's continuum or not 
But Microsoft, and I think we've talked about this before in the past, their goal here is, okay, design an app for Windows 10, you know, it scales down, it can easily be rewritten for Windows 10 for mobile, um, using that continuum feature even. And, and that's how their Photos app, for example, runs. That's how their, their Office apps run. It's the same app running on the phone, and then all of a sudden when it's full screen, it looks like a full uh, Windows app. And so that's that's both the compelling instance of, of Windows 10 is, is this continuum feature where you get the PC and the mobile, but it's also one of the things that's been hurting Windows forever is that there's not enough apps, and let alone apps that do that, but just you know apps in general. And on stage, Microsoft said, what, Facebook's coming? Like, okay, so that means probably Instagram too, which has been in beta forever. But there's a lot more that needs to be delivered there. Right, right. Now, I overall, and I don't mean this as a slam on Microsoft. I definitely under the Bomber administration, there there wasn't a whole lot of innovation going on. There wasn't a whole lot of excitement going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was the most excited I've been by a Microsoft event in oh, ages. Okay. Yeah. They had my attention. I was very interested in Continuum. I was very interested in the laptop, despite its funky hinge. <laughs> yeah. it, the Surface Pro 4 looked fantastic. You know, overall, it was a very, it was very not Microsoft. Yeah. I think I was disappointed, though, in HoloLens, which has excited us before at Microsoft. And I think... And then they were like, oh, $3,000. Like, did anybody see that price coming? I didn't. Well, but that's the developer. But. That is the developer kit, which I'm sure includes extra hardware. It's also early. I don't think that's what consumer pricing will be. Mm. You know, I, I hope not. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, the HoloLens will exist as a, a lovely dream for many people. Yeah. But... um. I honestly, with I mean, at least we finally got a, a step in the right direction with Hololens, and that it is going out to developers. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> perhaps we're finally moving towards a release. I I don't want to watch vaporware for another couple years. Right. <laughs> you know, it, not not that Microsoft has ever done that to us before. Yes, they have. <laughs> <laughs> But no, overall, it was a very, very interesting event. I, I'm excited for the future of Windows. Um, I still say, you know, of course, the biggest thing is the App Store. They, but they do seem to be working on that and trying to move forward. But uh, did they say what the price was going to be for that little additional hub for the phones? I think it's a hundred bucks, which I, I, I think that should be bundled in. I mean. Come on. Yeah, it's That's like one of the highlight features and people need to pay an additional $100 on top. Like just get it out there. Get people impressed with your phones and then sell it. Yeah, I there should at least be a a, a bundle option for like the first 2 months or something. Yeah. Because I mean that that is a a flagship feature. Yeah. Certainly. I don't yeah. know. The idea of being able to take my, because I mean, a lot of the guys at the office, they put their MacBooks and, you know, holders and Docs, run, yeah. run, you know, everything off of that. You know, the idea of being able to slip my computer in my pocket. Yeah. To take it from home to work is an amazing concept. Yeah, that would be amazing. I mean, you say out in Irvine or whatever, you just keep the hub in your backpack and out in Irvine or, you know, your office, wherever that is for other people. You know, you have your keyboard, mouse, and a monitor, and that's all you need, right? You can just travel everywhere with your phone. That, to me, is super compelling, and I hope that this is where everyone is going. I hope it's where Android goes. I mean, it can't be that hard at this point for for Google to throw a version of Chrome OS onto some partition on an Android device, right? Yeah. I mean, it's the same processors. And so, I mean, it's not the same, but you're looking at similar processors, unless... You're looking at the Core i5 or Core i3 Chromebooks, but those are sort of a different league. But I mean, it's possible. And I think we could see it with Intel processors too with, with the Windows machines. So I don't know. And I think Apple has <laughs> has so far given no indication of going in that direction aside from multi-view Windows. But it's, it's, I, it's where we should be going. I think that's the future of personal computing. And I think it's where other technologies, I mean, Ubuntu was trying it too. Yeah. No, I definitely agree with you. I I think this is something everyone's going to have to start to look at because 
you know, a lot of people are like, oh, well, I don't want to carry, you know, a device that only has one use. You look at a laptop. Yeah. And it does primarily have one use. Right. Yes, you can watch Netflix on it or you can do work or you can surf the web or whatever. All things you can also do from your phone. Right. You know, so the idea of being able to do that, you know, plug it, it, every phone should be looking at this. I completely agree with you. Mm -hmm. This is definitely something that needs to be looked at. Uh, the other topic we wanted to jump to, and of course we'll take Microsoft questions during the Q and a session, uh, was the new Apple accessories. <laughs> you know, for a company that prides themselves on design, why are they still holding on to the magic mouse? Yeah. <laughs> I've, I'm like you. We talked about this the other day. I've never liked the Magic Mouse. I've never liked. Apple I have Mouse. never met anyone that likes the Magic Mouse. <laughs> and here's a new one. <laughs> that looks exactly the same, but it yeah, has force exactly. touch. Right, I mean, but is, is force touch in the Magic Mouse or just the new trackpad? I, here, I I'm magic using Mac. a Mac. Yeah, as you can see, yeah. Microsoft Mouse. Yeah, I have a Steel Series mouse over here. Yeah, and I'm using a Microsoft keyboard. See, I have Hello, Apple's wireless keyboard. I'll give them that, and I don't even know why I bought it. But I, I was, actually, I'll tell you why I bought it. Everybody on the Techno Buffalo staff, when we have Skype calls and stuff for other meetings, I used to use mechanical keyboards, which I love, but they're so darn loud that uh, I switched to something yeah. quieter. And I figured, you know what? I'm used to typing on the MacBook all the time. This is as close to that as I'm going to get. Besides. You know, learning another quiet keyboard. So that's, that's right, I mean. right. Now, I will say, I when the original Magic Trackpad was first announced, I thought, oh my God, you know, who, who's going to buy this? Then I walked into an Apple store and tried one. <laughs> and uh, I love it. I, I think it's a great device. It actually does have a lot of uses. See, that I've never being, used one. Wow. I, I actually really like it. Huh. But that being said, $129 is a ridiculous price. Yeah, all these. I don't feel it needed to be bigger. I'm sorry. I don't care what they say because I mean, I only have so much real estate on my desk. Yeah. You know, and I actually, where it sits, I have no more room. <laughs> Period. So uh, I just, I, now I will say this if you buy a new Mac, you can throw it on for $50. That's not horrible. That I could live with, mm -hmm. but going out and buying one outright for $129 is insane. Right. Now, since you do use the wireless keyboard, what do you think about the new wireless keyboard with rechargeable? Yeah, that's nice because this one actually has, has chewed through batteries so far. And um, the design, while it looks nice, and <laughs> I feel like I'm reviewing a keyboard right now, but you know, you unscrew the side here, you pop in the batteries, and I, I feel like it could have been done better. It's really clunky. The screw mechanism. I like the lightning charging. That seems pretty cool. Month of battery life. Uh, I, if I didn't already own this, I'd probably buy that. But at, at this point, you know. I no, I, of course. Yeah. I, ne next time you're in the market for a keyboard. Right. Mike. Yeah. Like I, I do like the fact that it's finally rechargeable. Uh, mm -hmm. It'd be nice if the Magic Trackpad was also rechargeable because I, I do use Apple rechargeable batteries in it, but still, it's it'd be nice if it it itself was rechargeable. Is it not? The new one's not? Huh. I don't think so. I mean, I'm not going to swear to that, though. I thought they were all lightning supported with lightning, but I don't know. Um, I also think it looks like it had better spacing and better keys, and they did say that they worked on the key design, so it looks a bit more like what we've seen on MacBooks. Um, and as for the Magic Trackpad with Force Touch, it's a feature I haven't used on my Mac. Uh, for anything, actually. So it's it's cool. It works. You know, I don't use Safari. I use Chrome. Um, and, and Safari is sort of the highlight feature for that. I don't use Apple Maps, and, and that's another place where I could use Force Touch. Um, so I wouldn't upgrade to that for that reason either. Like, the, the two, you know, main reasons it seems like is the 30% increased surface area and Force Touch, right? Yeah. Like, okay. I don't yeah. need either of those. But I guess at some point you have to sort of revision your products and get new ones out there. So maybe that's all it is. Brazen Franco just made an interesting comment about uh, still no backlight on the keyboard. Yeah. Honestly, I was just thinking about that. 
I always turn the backlight off on my MacBook because I'm like, I nope, don't need to use that much battery. And oh. yeah, I if I'm plugged in, I might turn the backlight back on, but I really don't find it that useful. I'm not often in a, a dark room typing. You, on the other hand, you are, you're at events. Yeah, I guess um, I always have mine on. Yeah, but see, I don't, because I live in the middle of nowhere, uh, <laughs> I don't go to a lot of events, so I don't have a whole lot of need for the backlight. Right. But would that be a feature you would want on the keyboard? I think so, yeah. I was actually just thinking about that when I picked it up. If I could have it on my desk on this keyboard, I probably would want a backlight too. And I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just aesthetics. Like, I don't look down while I'm typing or anything. But something yeah, I, about having more light while you're typing. I, I don't think any of us look down when we're yeah. typing. It's just poke typing. <laughs> uh, we just hit keys and then we hope it looks like words that's right <laughs> so we've got a lot of questions coming in so we're going to jump into some of those uh of course the most important question uh let me find it here it, it's scrolled away from here uh sean the man 34 i'm back got to ask the question what have you returned todd oh man Nothing yet. I think I bought something. I have the Amazon Echo. We've talked about that. Uh, I actually, you know what? I probably would have returned the 6S Plus <laughs> if I had any gumption to do so. I just, you can read my review, but I don't feel I bought it you know, full price, and I feel like eh, it wasn't worth that much money for an upgrade over my 6 Plus. But I ended up giving a 6 Plus to my wife, so it worked out. So, Yeah, I... Just like I, I ended up fine. I, I, we won't, we won't go into why it happened. I ended up buying an iPad Air too, but oh, there you go. so my mother is getting my iPad Air. You know, so that I was like, okay, she was still using iPad three. I was like, okay, we can finally get rid of all the thirty pin connectors, <laughs> yeah. except for charging my iPod Classic, right? Oh, but, I know something. but otherwise, the thirty pins are out of our lives. And uh, her iPad three was definitely slowing down, so I was like, oh, "Fine." And I'm, I'm, my battery life on the air was starting to get a little wonky, and so it was time. Yeah, it was uh, time. John convinced me I'm going to sell my Nexus five and my One Plus One just through Amazon. Yeah, it was sitting in my desk. So. Yeah, and uh, we, uh, you know, okay. So funny story about Amazon trade in. So. I'm going to trade in my one plus one as well. We're, we're getting really good price for it. Yeah. So it's 130 bucks. While I was out there, I got the opportunity to buy a Nexus six off Niven, our intern. He only used it for a few months. It's in great shape. You know, I was thrilled and I, I wanted a new phone for when I traveled to the, to England. So I was like, okay, you know, let's see. Can I, how much can I get for my mega 6.3? I was like, oh, I'll get nothing for it. Mm. And so I go on Amazon, I get all excited at first because it looks like I'm going to get over $200. I'm like, hold the phone. Okay, this is fantastic. Then when I got home, I was like, okay, I, I, I went and found the box. I was all ready. I went back. I was like, oh, wait a minute. That's $200 for the white version. Okay, so I found the black version. $12.63. What? What? Wait, what? <laughs> they will give you over two hundred dollars for the white version. Paint it. <laughs> <laughs> you must have talked to my mother because she said the same thing. But <laughs> That's yeah, crazy. they will. They will only give me twelve dollars and sixty three cents for the black version. That's obscene. That that is crazy. Yeah. I mean, for twelve dollars and sixty three cents, I'll just hold on to it as a backup phone. Right. Exactly. I mean, two hundred dollars. I mean, this thing would have already been out the door. But <laughs> the, uh, Gazelle they, they must have me, had a limited run or something. I mean, maybe I don't know. Gazelle will give me ninety, huh. which, which I'm a little. I'm a, that, that's a little tempting. And, and actually, folks, we plan on doing uh, towards the holidays because that's always a good time to trade in your stuff. We're actually going to do a whole episode about cycling your electronics and trading them in and all that. So look forward to that. It's either going to be really interesting or really boring. It just depends. But <laughs> so we got a lot of other questions coming here uh, from Sachin Bahal. Are any of you using Apple Music or do you guys use a different streaming service for music? Well, personally, I did sign up for Apple Music and 
turned off the automatic billing too late, so I paid for a month. <laughs> um, but generally, I use Pandora. I like the music discovery on it a lot, and so that's just always been my streaming service of choice. Todd, I believe you're Spotify? I have Spotify. I use Apple Music. I use Google Play Music, and I pay for all of them. I don't know why. And uh, <laughs> Well, it's, it's really it comes down to different devices I'm on. I'd say Spotify because um, you know, it, it's across Android and stuff. And then Apple Music, I've actually grown to like a bit for Discovery. Um, Google Play, already Google Play is my Android, and I like Google Play on Android TV. And then I've just started using Amazon Prime Music because I have the Alexa here, and she just plays it. You know, if I say like, play this. Well, we we can give you that one because it's included in because it's included. But those are the ones that I know. I got to cancel. I'll probably cancel Google Play Music. It's kind of just, I mean, Spotify. I think does a better job. Mm -hmm. So I don't need that, and it, it's cross platform. Um, and then I, I really do like Apple Music though for some things. That's still that's a lot of music subscriptions. Yeah. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that was my next step i was going to call her later and, <laughs> what you mean she doesn't listen to the techno buffalo show yeah no she does not uh, okay <laughs> <laughs> no but now that she has this six plus here's where things get interesting apple's family plans 14.99 that's cheaper than spotify's family plan so maybe i switch just to that that's true the thing that I, I on the site when apple music came out i still stand by this Spotify is great for sharing music with friends. Um, my friends, you know, they'll, they'll send me a song and they'll come in my inbox and I get to play it. That's brilliant. And shared playlists and stuff like that. And that's not in Apple Music. So it'd be hard to give that up. Yeah. I, I don't know. I I don't listen to music. I, I listen to a lot more podcasts than I listen to music anymore. So I'm like, yay, it's all free. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see from Sean, the man 34, uh, with Microsoft making a smartwatch tablet, laptop, and virtual reality. Do you think we will see a Microsoft TV box product? I, I assume he means streaming set top box. Yeah. Honestly, I think Microsoft looks at the Xbox one as that. I think so too. That's what I was going to say. Um, I don't see a standalone box. No, I, mean, I don't either. I just, I, I can't see them. Why the thing is it's a couple hundred bucks. I mean, what is it 400 bucks now but you know they come out with a box maybe that's like 150 they're probably going to say like look you know why make all these sacrifices to get down to 150 bucks and you can have sort of what they envision as the the center of your home i, I think they'd rather use by the xbox one yeah exactly so i i just i can't see them doing a set top box I, it would be interesting but i just I, I yeah. think they're just going to want to keep you on the uh, Xbox One for as long as possible. Uh, let's see here. Uh, from Sachin Bahal, is the Chromecast audio what the Nexus Q is supposed to be? Well, if anyone actually understood what the Nexus Q was supposed to be... <laughs> then we could give you a final answer. <laughs> then we could give you a final answer. Yeah. As you all can see in the Techno Buffalo videos that are shot out in Irvine, at least when John's on the couch set, you can see the Nexus Q up on the shelf. We we keep it as like a you know a memento of we really still don't understand this thing. What was that? Uh, <laughs> honestly, I believe it was developed by Google's track and field team. <laughs> shot shot put. Put. <laughs> because that thing, have you ever picked it up? Yeah, yeah. That I mean, I remember is, when it was announced and everything. It's just sort of like that thing is freaking heavy. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, I. Mean, I no. I I don't know. I honestly I don't think anyone fully understands what the Nexus Q was supposed to be. So who knows if the Chromecast audio is actually a replacement for it? Yeah, that, that was one of the oddest things ever released. I like that the Chromecast audio is so affordable, though. I don't. The Nexus Q is expensive, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, uh, who knows? Uh, Chromecast audio is like thirty-five bucks. I need to. Pay I, that. Uh, from Brazen Franco, is trackpad uh, the trackpad is amazing, especially in multi monitor configurations. But why the increase in price and the return of the white color? The aluminum brush finish was so much better looking. I agree with you. I love the the brush aluminum look. It looked like the majority of their other products. Why they decided with white, I have no idea. Um, I will say that's a, a lot of the reason I use the trackpad is 
I'm running three monitors. Yeah. What does it have like a really good DPI, I guess, or high? That's why I use a gaming mouse. Yeah. Oh, did, did I tell you about my third monitor when I was out in Irvine? No. So I told the guys before I went out there that I needed, you know, extra monitors, which they, they, we always have spare monitors laying around. Right. And so one of the monitors I used to use, we ended up having to return to the manufacturer because our review period was over. So they had a little tiny HP for me. And when I get there, I, I go into, you know, on the weekend to get my stuff that I leave there in the office when I'm not in town. And there is a 42 inch curved LG television sitting <laughs> on my desk. That's I'm like, awesome. Okay. I'm assuming this is my second monitor, you know, one of my two <laughs> monitors. And sure enough, that was all they had. So, yeah. so to my right, I had a 42 inch curved LG television as a monitor. Just, which actually, I was like, "Oh, this is so stupid." And that was the, that's always the monitor I run TweetDeck on. So uh, I just, yeah. going <laughs> on forty-two inches. But then I discovered the wonders of it when I had to edit a Photoshop photo. Oh, that would be frustrating, though, because you just can't see all the imperfections. Right? It was so much easier. Oh, all right. I loved it. I was like. I'm going to have to fight the urge to buy a 42 inch television for my desk. Well, I, you can see right behind me, I have a 32 inch right here. Um, and I've used it as a monitor. I did for a while as my primary, and now I just have it hooked up to nothing. It's sort of like I'll put a Chromecast in it every now and then because then it, it was just getting too big. Yeah. It, like, well, uh, uh, when we have big event days, I do I do have a 42 inch uh, Roku television here yeah. in my office. And so I'll Apple. I'll, you know, I'll screencast over to that for, to the Apple TV. And so then that way I can run chart beat or whatever over on that monitor. Right. So I go to four monitors on I, first world problems, folks. First yeah. world problems. I, I can say, actually, I saw the, the question from Sean, the man 34. Did we play the battlefront beta? I did right here. I did not get a chance because <laughs> I was out in Irvine. Ah, it was awesome. I loved it. Yeah, I know. I, it that day too. Yeah, I mean, um, I I know our, the guys in the office that had time to play it enjoyed it. I un unfortunately I was traveling, so I really didn't get a chance to play it. What I saw of it is I walked by the game room, looked great. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, Joey was talking to me about it this morning, and he was saying that actually a lot of people seem mixed on it. That there's a lot of disappointment out there. Oh, interesting. I haven't read up on other people's opinions. I just sort of played it and was like, oh, I like it. Well, apparently a lot of people had problems with the Hoth battle. And oh, yeah. That, I mean, I was assuming they were going to fix that, but it was so unbalanced. Yeah, and, and they're saying they're, they are going to, to balance it more. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was hilariously yeah. unbalanced. Yeah, if you were on the... For those that don't know if you played on the side of the Rebels. Although, I mean, I have to say, have you all seen the movie? Right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, this should not exactly be a, an easy uh, fight Battle, right. you know, for the rebels but uh, okay uh, let's see here uh, from Such and Bahal hey Sean I know that Todd would rather buy the Nexus 5X over the Nexus 6P funny you should bring that up but which would you choose and why <laughs> I have the page open I was just talking to Sean about buying it before the show <laughs> right before the show Todd was sitting here going Oh, should I get a 5X? Should I get a 6P? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm still I'm still bullish on the 5X. And st I mean, for pricing and, and the camera is still great and all that. That's why I think the 5X is better buy. But Yeah, I mean, if I hadn't just bought the Nexus 6 off of Niven, I, I might be tempted by the 6P. But I still, either way, I, the whole thing for me is a lot of times, my now that I'm a T-Mobile customer, I want the Wi-Fi calling because I get no signal in my house. Mm -hmm. So I have to buy T-Mobile branded phones because for whatever reason, they can't add Wi-Fi calling to a phone that you didn't buy from them. <laughs> As you can see, I really believe this. Um, so unfortunately, I'm kind of stuck. Yeah. But uh, Niven gave me a great price on this Nexus 6, so I'm like, woohoo, I can use it with my 3 account. Which, by the way, I had my first experience with cutting down a SIM card. Yeah. It's slightly nerve-wracking. 
I imagine. I wouldn't. I've never gone that way. I think you went from. Would you go from micro sim to nano sim? Yeah, I had to go from micro to nano. I've I've only gone up with adapters or in a lot of phones. Um, well, not the latest sim. So, but like if you if I had the, uh, I think the G four might still be micro sim. In any case, um, you could put the nano in, and as long as you kind of finagle it right and, and get it just right, it takes like five tries. Then yeah. It works. Yeah, well, the, the Mega 6.3 was micro, and that's why I picked up a, a micro sim from 3 when I bought it. Mm. And so, yeah, I cut down, and I've got adapters and all that stuff now. I'm just like, uh, But, you know, you're, I, like, checked it three times to make sure, okay, it's perfectly lined up. Yeah. <laughs> Here goes nothing. Here goes nothing, because it will be nothing if it doesn't work. Right. <laughs> oh, good, goodness gracious. Uh, from Sean the Man 34. For any word on the new Apple TV pre-order date? Not yet. No, I saw, what was it, uh, rumor, I think, recently was first week in November, if I'm not mistaken. I don't have it up in front of me, but I, I wrote the article, so I think it was first week, they were saying, and uh, and iPad Pro, too, because both are expected in November, so maybe it was, or it could have been last week of October for the Apple TV. In any case, I'm waiting just as much as everybody else for that thing. I'm excited for it. Partially excited for it. I don't want to get ahead of myself because then I might just return it. <laughs> As we all know, there's one reason why I'm yeah, super excited I'm for Apple TV. Terrible. Hate that thing. But <laughs> as I, for those listening at home, I held up the uh, current Apple TV remote. Yeah. Uh, from Brazen Franco, what's up with MS now forcing everyone on 7, 8, and 8.1 to upgrade to 10 with no opt-out option? How is this not a violation of the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act? I have not heard about this. Uh, yeah, we wrote it up earlier today. Killian did it. So that's oh, okay. I, I haven't had a chance to go back and read his post. They're yeah. now forcing it? Yeah, that's the story. They're forcing up to Windows 10. And my guess, and I have no idea how they could you know, tell people what to do with their systems. especially. I mean, this is assuming that the system supports it, too, because they can't just you know force everybody, right? Um, I have a computer that I tried putting Windows 10 on, and now it's that $140 netbook I bought last year that I kept talking about on the show. Now it's just a rock. But anyway, <laughs> um, my guess is they, they're going to run into issues with that, you know, supported hardware. And two, the, the way I'm guessing we could get around something like a violation of a law is to say that this is safer than the other uh, software. So, like, if they're patching something, that would be open. But I don't know how else they'd get around it. Uh, now, see, here's the thing. So you're going to tell enterprises. Oh, I don't think they can do this to enterprise. There's no way they can do this to enterprise. <laughs> but now I know my parents' desktop. I know I'm going to get a phone call at any moment. Sean, Sean, I, <laughs> Sean, I turned on the desktop. The desktop. I, I don't, Sean, it won't. It's telling me I have to upgrade, Sean. It says 10. It says 10. <laughs> <laughs> now, here, let, let me read you the whole pop-up window. No, I don't need you. No, I need you. Let me read the whole pop-up window to you. <laughs> oh, man, sounds like my parents. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime anything happens on the computer that they don't have 100% understanding of, it oh. comes right to you. Oh, yeah, it's it's a great time. Oh. Good grief. Uh, from Such and Bahal, which OS do you guys use the most and why? And what do you use each for? Great question. Because I'm solo OS at this point, and you're still dual OS. I am. Um, I, I use Mac only. Uh, that came, and I know I've told this story before, so I'll be quick. I, I was Windows only for 20 some years. And after I, even with running antivirus, having all sorts of safeguards on it. I was getting tired of every two weeks having to spend a Saturday night cleaning my system of viruses and malware and adware and everything else. And I came into an opportunity uh, through a situation that I had some extra cash and I was like, that's it. I'm buying an iMac. Let's see what happens. I bought an iMac and I've not looked back. Hmm. I have not spent one Saturday night cleaning this thing. And, you know, also the fact that my iMac is a 2011 and I, I can't remember. I was talking to somebody at Techno Buffalo about this the other day. I think it was you. Mm -hmm. um, if I had a Windows machine on my desk, 
you know, that I'd purchased in 2011, it would be a rock by now. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. You know, so while I always stayed away from Max because of the, the high initial price, I'm starting to be, because believe me, I was a Mac hater for a lot of years. I'll admit it. And, uh, I still, I, I do see the uses of Windows. My parents still use Windows, so I, I do still dive into the OS every so often. But in general, I'm just a lot happier on Mac. It's made my life a lot simpler. Now you, I know, still use both. I do. I have my Windows computer right next to me. It's a desktop box that I built in 2012. So that just goes to show it's not plugged in. I mean, it needs upgrades throughout. Um, so I'll be back on that. Otherwise, I've been using Surface Pro 3, but that's only when I'm sort of out and working and I need something really light to carry because I have this MacBook hooked up to all the monitors and everything like that. So I can, it's kind of like docked in a way. It's all hooked up, so I don't unplug it that often. Um, and then I also have, like I was saying, that Windows 10 notebook that I've been using for a while. or It was 8.1, but now it's 10, and now it's just kind of dead. So... Um, I'm actually on the lookout for either a Chrome OS device, though, or a uh, another affordable Windows 10 product. And I know a lot of these manufacturers came out with them recently, so I'll probably check one of them out. I think ideally, and I've talked about it on the show, <laughs> the smallest thing I can get that functions is probably the one I'll buy, like with a good keyboard, good trackpad, and I can do work from. So whether it's a, a tablet with a keyboard and it's Chrome, or something similar with Windows. That's that's my next purchase. Yeah. Well, but I, I know you. I'd say I'm on Mac. I guess now because my desktop needs to be upgraded. The hardware. Yeah. No, I know that feeling. Uh, let's see what else have we got here. We got a lot of stuff uh, from Itty Brayman, I believe. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. What do you expect from the new OnePlus X? I think it'll make phone calls. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like kind of a, a relatively mid-range device, lower cost than the OnePlus 2. I guess my problem going into this is I wasn't that impressed with the OnePlus 2, so I don't have huge high hopes for the OnePlus X. I know it's going to be you know, not as powerful as the OnePlus 2, but I guess rumor has it maybe NFC and stuff like that, which are things they left out of their flagship for whatever reason. Um, but I don't know. I'm, it's not one of the, it's not really high on my radar. Of it. That is going to be so bizarre if that thing has NFC. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. I, I'm I'm going to be like, <laughs> like it, it was the biggest complaint we all had about the One Plus Two, and then they go yeah. and put it in a mid range phone. Maybe we don't. Maybe we, who knows? Maybe that doesn't happen. We do not know. Just it's like. I, it's mind-boggling. Like, okay, maybe your consumers didn't want it, but you know that Android Pay was on the radar. Like, why? Like, and that's a highlight feature now that Google's touted. Like, why wouldn't you add that? So now your consumers can't use Android Pay. Like, what? Yeah, I, I don't get it. I don't know. Uh, from Sean the Man 34, is Techno Buffalo going to the Star Wars premiere? Okay, I'll, I'll so. quickly explain how this works. <laughs> Okay, so yes, we know the date of the, the premiere now is uh, Monday, December 14th. Now, typically, when we have been invited to premieres, we don't get the invites till seven to ten days beforehand. So we will not know until, like, December 4th at the earliest. That being said, John and I are hopeful, but we are not holding our breaths for this one. Um, awesome. This is going to be the hottest ticket in Hollywood in years. So... so the chances of Techno Buffalo getting in, while we would love it, we would be honored, we would be thrilled, we're not holding our breath. That being said, also, there is some debate about who will be plus one. Uh, some people in the Irvine office think it will be them. Really? I, have exp I, I have explained to them, I'll tell you who later. I have explained to them that there will be, they will be turned into a grease spot. <laughs> yeah. They obviously don't listen to the Techno Buffalo show. That they will <laughs> they will suffer severe bodily harm, <laughs> and all John would say is, "I'm not involved. You all figure it out." I was like, "You are a wussy." <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, yeah, there, there there's been some uh, debate, but so we'd love to go. We just don't know yet. And again, we're we're not holding our breath. We would love it, but we're not holding our breath. 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, from Sachin Bahal, do you think Google would ever release a more expensive Chromecast that would be like $49 or so and run Android TV, essentially making a direct competitor to Amazon's Fire TV stick? I don't see why not. I'd like to see it. I think if they were going to do it, they would have done it. That That's the thing. I, I think it would have already happened. Right, because, and then they're also undercutting the Nexus player, which to me is sort of just like a proof of concept so manufacturers like NVIDIA and others can make Shield TV and stuff. But um, I don't know. Like, why would the Nexus player exist if they have a $49 Android TV? But at the same time, Amazon's done the same with the Fire TV and the Fire TV stick. Roku's done the same with the Roku's and the Roku TV stick. Oh, I know. I just, yeah. What would I know, be it's, yeah, I but I agree with you. I think if they were going to do it, they would have already done it. Yeah, yeah, you know, and else? they could have leave it open. I don't know. It, it, it's going to be interesting. It, it, it would be interesting, but we'll see. Yeah, the difference I'd say is that Roku and Amazon, those guys don't already have. I mean, they don't. Google has the Chromecast, and then they have their. So, like, the Chromecast is their stick. So, why create this third middle? product i don't know yeah uh from kutcon i believe uh do you think oneplus saw a reduction in the demand of oneplus two and they changed the buying procedure so early probably probably i mean we we have zero info on that but um and you could say either that or you could say that they've learned their lessons about production i don't think they've learned their lessons I, I I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt and be nice. <laughs> I you play devil's advocate and I'll be I the know. angel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because I I look so much like an angel, you know. I um, I I would say that's probably a sound theory, but again, we have no information whatsoever. We don't. We know that they did run into manufacturing trouble, and I think. You know, maybe they change things because, look, you have Motorola with new phones out. You have a lot of other manufacturers releasing low-cost phones. New Nexuses are out now. They don't want consumers going elsewhere. They want consumers still buying those one pluses. So I think that's why they're, they're tuning with them. I, I see a lot of people upvoting uh, a question about what keyboards and mice we use. If you go, if, what, once the show's over, go back folks we talked about that before that question came in um it, it's a decent question but we actually just answered in normal chit chat uh so we're going to end with a couple off topic questions real quick and uh just let's see here from sean the man 34 i i have a feeling this is based on the fact that every time i go to irvine i tweet about being at disneyland uh favorite ride at disneyland hands down no questions whatsoever haunted mansion yep i knew it uh, <laughs> oh they were so busy when i went in july there was like no lines i was like got off and on six times in a row no wait (laughs) i waited 55 minutes for the haunted mansion yeah that's last yeah so i only got one right in uh oh let's see wait we just had a question come in from a dennis langston uh i was excited for the windows phone but now to find out that it's only going to be on at&t if it doesn't sell well do you think they will release it for other carriers i'm on t-mobile no it's usually the other way around <laughs> yeah it's it, it, well it's, with other carriers yeah i wait was it was it the windows phones that we had that mass confusion that first day be, with, because a, a unnamed Microsoft executive. Oh, yes. It's not an AT and T exclusive, but AT and T is the only carrier so far to say that they'll carry the phone. In other words, AT and T other carriers can carry it if they want to. <laughs> and so far, there hasn't been announcements from other carriers, and I think that's the point of this. The answer here. Um, if it sells well, I think other carriers might pick it up. If it doesn't sell well, I don't think you'll see it picked up on other carriers. And I think the plan now, and remember, that's only an Illumina 950. The XL is still up in the air. Um, 950s at AT&T. So you, you'd have to buy it unlocked from Microsoft. Yeah. I, I'm going to guess. I, 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 if history really repeats it. itself, it's going to be AT&T, and that's it, unfortunately. 
I really wonder who that Microsoft executive was and if anyone ever figured it out because he caused mass chaos that day. I did hear who said it, but yeah, it was misquoted. Okay, cool. <laughs> Uh, we're going to end on, uh, poor Suchin has asked this question for a couple of weeks running and I've never gotten to it. So <laughs> let me, uh, pull it up here off topic. What new and returning shows are you guys watching this TV season? Also, have any of you guys watched Mr. Robot? It's almost like watchdogs. The game turned into a TV show. I've heard nothing but glowing praise for Mr. Robot, but I have not had a chance to check it out yet. I haven't seen it either. Um, new and returning shows. I don't know. We, we don't have long enough to list all the shows I watch. <laughs> <laughs> and the shows I watch are really boring. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I watch Arrow, Flash, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, let's see, what else do I watch? Uh, I'm a longtime Survivor and Amazing Race fan. Uh, I really got into iZombie last season. That was real. I've never read the comic, so it's not coming from a, a comic book background. I just thought it was a really well-written show uh what else do i watch uh big bang theory that's kind of a given with my lifestyle uh <laughs> uh i watch a lot of shows i watch too much television honestly i'm going through well folks downton abbey and ken burton's documentary on the civil war <laughs> so... uh, whose documentary on the civil war ken burns uh, oh ed burns no I, th I thought his name's Edward Burns. Different documentary guys. I don't know. No, Ken Burns. Ken Burns. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that's his name. I, I, it's got to be Ken Burns. Is it the one that's like 16 hours long? Yeah, that's the one I said. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's Ken Burns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like the longest documentary ever filmed. It, yeah. It's unbelievable. It's, it's really good. I, I, again, something I haven't had time to watch, but everyone's told me I need to watch it. <laughs> well, folks, that is going to do it for this week. So as always, we appreciate you joining us. If you head over to the iTunes store and search for the Techno Buffalo show, you can find us. And we do appreciate if you rate and review us. That does help out the show. You can also find us on Pocket Cast. You can subscribe via RSS feed. You can find us on the Stitcher app, which means you can listen to us anytime, anywhere. Anywhere there are podcasts, you can find the Techno Buffalo show. Until next week, I'm Sean Ani. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Techno Buffalo, and I've been joined by Deputy Managing Editor Todd Hazelton. Bye, everybody. Until next week, take it easy, everyone. Bye-bye.